Hello, my dear adventurers. It's Fox. Welcome back to our cozy haven, where the whispers of the world fade into gentle echoes and dreams of magic await. Tonight, I want to share with you some of my favorite tales as we ride into the heart of the Wild West with Arthur Morgan, a charming and legendary outlaw. Under the expansive starlit skies, our tales take us on daring adventures, where the scent of campfire smoke lingers in the air and the distant sound of a harmonica sets the evening's mood. Imagine yourself stepping into a rustic saloon, the creak of the wooden floor familiar under your boots. Each glint of the setting sun paints shadows and light across faces marked by the sun and wind revealing tales of outlaws and sheriffs, adventures and ambushes. In this place, history is not just recounted, it's lived. So settle in by the cozy campfire and let the hustle of modern life fade into the background. Nestled among worn leather and soft earth, let's journey together into the storied life of Arthur Morgan, where every sunset promises a story and the open frontier beckons with the thrill of the unknown. In the rugged heart of the Grizzlies, the morning sun cast long golden beams across the dew-speckled landscape Amidst the towering pines and the whispering winds, the outlaw, Arthur Morgan, sat astride his trusty horse, Cal, contemplating the busy day ahead. His leather hat shaded his brow, and his eyes twinkled with mischief and determination. All right, folks, Arthur called out his voice steady and commanding, drawing the attention of the ragtag group of outlaws gathered around him. This payroll isn't gonna steal itself. We hit the train at the gorge, and remember, no unnecessary bloodshed. We're thieves, not monsters. Beside him, the ever-impulsive John Marston grinned, checking the chambers of his revolver. Just hope we're done before supper. I got plans tonight, he quipped. Arthur shot him a wry smile. Don't we all, John? Don't we all? The plan was simple. Intercept the train as it slowed to navigate the sharp curves of the grizzly's treacherous terrain, grab the government payroll and disappear into the dense forest before the law could blink. Yet, as with all things involving Arthur Morgan, nothing was as simple as it seemed. You see, just weeks before, under the delicate arches and gaslit romance of St. Denise, Arthur had made a heartfelt promise to Mary Linton. The conversation with Mary had been a rare moment of vulnerability, a time when the rugged facade of the outlaw had slipped, revealing the earnest man beneath. They had reunited after yet another of their sporadic partings, trying to mend a bond strained by Arthur's turbulent life with Dutch's gang. Mary, with her gentle demeanor and sharp wit, had always been Arthur's hope of what life could be. 
outside the chaos of his current existence. Their relationship, marked by long separations and fleeting reunions, had endured despite the odds. This time, as they strolled along the cobblestone, Mary had spoken of hope and new beginnings, suggesting that perhaps there was a chance for a future together, away from the endless cycle of fleeing and fighting. The Grand Theatre's marquee lights had flickered on, illuminating the cobbled streets of Saint-Denis with a warm, inviting glow. Mary's eyes had sparkled with excitement as she spoke of the play, a travelling performance, rumoured to match the grandeur of those in far-off New York. I do hope you'll join me, Arthur, just a night away from everything. Can you do that for me? It would mean so much, she had said, her voice soft yet earnest. And Arthur, caught in the moment and her earnest gaze, had agreed without a second thought. He had responded with a sincerity that surprised even him. I'll be there, Mary. You have my word. Nothing will keep me from it. The words had sealed his commitment. A vow, made all the more poignant by the backdrop of the tranquil city night. A stark contrast to his usual world. However, the unforeseen news of the train laden with gold threw a wrench into the quiet plans Arthur had entertained, perhaps naively, of a peaceful evening at the theatre. The prospect of the heist had come at the worst possible time, surfacing just as he was preparing to turn over that new leaf with Mary. Knowledge of the government payroll aboard had come from a wiry old prospector whom Arthur and Charles had encountered in a dusty saloon on the outskirts of Valentine. Over a game of cards and several rounds of whiskey, the prospector, loosened by the spirits and the charm of the outlaws, let slip about a special train carrying more than just mail and supplies. It was to be laden with gold, destined for the federal garrison at Fort Wallace. Sensing the golden chance before them, Arthur and Charles spent the next two days scouting the train's route, which took it through the Grizzlies, notorious for rugged and unforgiving terrain. Mists clung to the mountainsides, and the cries of distant wildlife echoed through the valleys. They rode under the guise of hunters, binoculars at the ready, studying the train's timings and the guards' routines. The stretch through the Grizzlies was particularly perilous, making it the perfect spot for an ambush. The train would be forced to slow, crawling through the narrow passes carved by nature and time. Back at camp, as Dutch and the gang settled into plans and preparation, Arthur battled with an internal conflict. The job was set for the very same day that he had promised to accompany Mary to the theatre. The realisation tightened his chest. Breaking his promise to Mary was the last thing he wanted. But missing out on the heist wasn't an option either. The gang needed him, relying on his leadership and steady hand. Late into the evening, Arthur tossed and turned. In the deep, shadowy recesses of the night, 
he made a decision. He would do both. He would not let Dutch and the gang down, nor would he break his word to Mary. It would require every ounce of his cunning, his skill, and perhaps a bit of luck from the harsh, unforgiving land that was the Grizzlies. Resolute, Arthur finally settled beside the dying fire, his mind racing through scenarios. He would partake in the heist, secure the payroll, and then ride like hell itself was on his heels to make it to the theater by sundown. It was a tall order, even for a seasoned outlaw like Arthur Morgan. The sun rose over the grizzlies, casting golden light on a path fraught with peril and promise. As Arthur mounted Cal, his resolve hardened. Today, he would not only attempt to outwit the law and secure the gang's fortune, but also race against the setting sun to uphold a promise to the woman who might just be his redemption. As the gang lay in wait, the distant chug of the steam engine grew louder. Arthur's keen eyes watched the winding track, his hand resting lightly on Cal's neck, calming the restless horse as the distant rumble of the train grew. Ready up, Arthur murmured, his voice a low rasp that carried just to those nearest him. Each member of the gang nodded, pulling bandanas up over their faces, the fabric muffling their breaths as they readied their weapons. The train, a monstrous iron beast, belching smoke and steam, appeared around the bend its wheels grinding against the tracks with a metallic screech that echoed through the valley. Arthur's nod was the signal, and like spectres, they surged forward from their hiding spots, closing the distance with practiced precision. However, the plan soured almost immediately. Bill, ever the bull in a china shop, caught his foot on a root, stumbling with a muffled curse that carried in the still air. The guards, previously relaxed, now snapped to alertness, their eyes scanning the brush from which the noise had emanated. Now, Arthur commanded, urgency spiking his tone. They couldn't wait any longer. Leaping from the tree line, the gang charged the train, climbing aboard as the guards scrambled to meet them. Gunfire erupted almost instantly, bullets whizzing through the air, biting into wood and metal. Arthur, up on the train now, moved with a lethal grace, his revolver finding its targets with deadly accuracy. Keep your heads down and push forward, he said, voice calm but loud, cutting through the chaos. His gaze swept the carriages, assessing their progress even as he fired. The gang pressed on, driven by Arthur's steady leadership. They blasted through a locked door to reach the payroll car, where sacks of money awaited them, stacked and unguarded in the frenzy. 
With swift, greedy hands, they loaded up. The weight of the gold and notes, a promise of temporary freedom and safety. As they retreated, jumping from the still moving train into the shelter of the forest, the lawmen were hot on their trail. Shots followed them into the underbrush, twigs snapping and leaves fluttering down as bullets found their mark in the trees rather than flesh. Arthur, his satchel heavy with stolen goods, led the mad dash through the woods. His heart pounded, not just from the exertion, but also from the pressing concern of time. Glancing at the sun, which hung low and menacing in the sky, a deep frown creased his brow. It was later than he'd hoped, the sun dipping dangerously close to the horizon, threatening to break his promise to Mary. Faster, we can lose them at the river, he called back, as they splashed through a shallow creek the cold water a sharp contrast to the heat of the chase. Behind him, the rest of the gang, their own bags slung over their shoulders, darted between the trees, dodging low-hanging branches and leaping over tangled roots. The air was filled with the sharp scent of pine and the earthy dampness of disturbed soil, punctuated by the distant shouts of lawmen, their voices carrying a mix of anger and urgency. As they lost the lawmen in a dense thicket, Arthur's gaze shot to the west, where the sun began its descent toward the horizon. We need to split up he decided, handing his share of the loot to John. Get this back to camp. With no time to spare, Arthur pushed his horse to its limits, racing towards St. Denis, the weight of his promise propelling him forward. The image of Mary Linton, sitting alone in a theatre, her eyes scanning the crowd for him, fueled his urgency. As he broke free of the tree line, Saint Denis emerged before him, its buildings bathed in the dying light of the sun, now just touching the rooftops. Arthur pushed Cal into a final, desperate sprint, mud splattering up from the ground staining his already grimy clothes further. The cobblestone streets of Saint-Denis blurred past as he made his way to the Grand Theatre. Skidding to a halt in front of the ornate entrance, Arthur dismounted with a flourish that belied his exhaustion. His appearance was a sight, mud-caked, disheveled, the very picture of an outlaw fresh from the fray. Yet, his eyes sparkled with the success of the heist and the relief of having made it on time. Arthur Morgan, you look like you've wrestled a bear, Mary exclaimed, stepping forward with a gasp, her eyes wide as she took in his rugged, dirt-streaked appearance. Grinning broadly, Arthur tipped his hat, his voice a playful drawl. Only a small one, Miss Linton. Shall we? He offered his arm, an invitation she accepted with a laugh, her earlier apprehension fading into amused relief. They entered the theatre together, 
the plush red carpets an ornate decor swallowing the sounds of the street behind them. As they took their seats, the curtains rose and the stage lights dimmed, casting the audience into a world of drama and romance, far removed from the dangers of the Grizzlies. Leaning closer as the play unfolded, Mary whispered, you made it just in time. With a chuckle, Arthur whispered back, his eyes twinkling mischievously, wouldn't miss it for the world. As the actors took the stage, Arthur's adventurous day of gunfire, galloping and gold slowly receded, replaced by the shared laughter and whispered comments between him and Mary. In that warm, cozy theatre, surrounded by the soft murmurs of the enchanted audience, the perilous heist seemed nothing more than a distant echo, a thrilling chapter in the ongoing saga of Arthur Morgan's storied life. The night was a reminder of the dual worlds he navigated, the wild and the refined. And as he sat there, his arm lightly resting around Mary, Arthur felt, perhaps for a fleeting moment, at peace in both. In the eerie quiet of a swampy evening near Saint-Denis, Arthur Morgan settled by his campfire, the crackle of flames breaking the heavy stillness. The bayou before him stretched endlessly, its waters a murky mirror reflecting the ghostly moonlight. He had been camping here for a few days, finding solace in the secluded environment before rejoining the bustle of the Vandalin gang. The swamp air was damp and laden with a mist that clung to everything like a thick blanket, typical yet unyielding. Earlier that day, Arthur ventured into a nearby fishing village to restock supplies. The village, perched on the bayou's edge, was a collection of weather-beaten buildings clinging together as if for warmth. Wooden boardwalks, worn smooth by years of use, weaved through the settlement, their creeks echoing softly. The village carried an uneasy silence, with faded missing posters fluttering on walls like old ghosts. The locals moved with a cautious air, casting fleeting, nervous glances, as if afraid of their own shadows. Approaching a fisherman with a wary look, Arthur inquired, Pardon me, mister, what's the story with these missing posters? He lit a cigarette, the smoke curling into the heavy air. Strange things happen around here, the fisherman murmured. People say there's something in the bayou, something wicked. Arthur raised an eyebrow, skepticism painted across his face. Well, reckon I'll have to see for myself, he responded, clapping the old man gently on the shoulder before heading back to camp. That night, after a simple meal by the fire, a piercing scream cut through the swamp's silence. Arthur sprang up, instinctively tucking his knife into his boot. Stay here, boy, he murmured to his horse, grabbing his rifle and heading into the dark marsh. Navigating the dense underbrush, Arthur trudged through ankle-deep mud, the squelching of each step echoing in the stillness of the night. Mosquitoes buzzed around him, 
their incessant whine adding to the oppressive atmosphere of the bayou. As he pushed further in, his mind seemed to play tricks on him. Darting shadows, barely perceptible, played at the edges of his vision. Arthur had the overwhelming sense that he was being stalked, perhaps even hunted. He gripped his rifle tightly, beads of sweat dripping down his face. He caught a small movement, a dark figure peeking from behind a tree. Suddenly, a shadow lunged at him from the darkness. Arthur grappled with the figure, wrestling in the cold mud, their breaths echoing in the night. With a swift move, he subdued his attacker, revealing a young man. Strange white paint marked his face, drawn in unfamiliar shapes and patterns. He walked over to the tree where the man had previously hidden and saw a set of footprints in the mud, leading away deeper into the swamp. Let's see if we can find out where in God's name you came from, Arthur mumbled, following the tracks. After some time, as the tracks began to blur and fade under a fresh onslaught of rain, Arthur spotted the faint glow of torchlight shimmering through the mist in the distance. He navigated the twisted maze of mangroves and towering cypress trees, their gnarled roots and draped moss forming a ghostly passageway. Emerging into a clearing, he encountered a chilling scene. A small camp alive with dozens of dark figures. There, Encircling a crudely constructed altar stood the night folk, their forms almost spectral in the uneven light. Their clothing, tattered and mud-streaked, fluttered like dark wraiths against the flickering torchlight. Their faces, smeared with stark white paint in sharp, ritualistic patterns, were barely visible, but hauntingly distinct in the play of shadows. The air was filled with their eerie chants, a discordant symphony of clicks and hisses that warped the silence of the swamp into a canvas of dread. Before the altar, several villagers knelt bound and gagged, their eyes wide with a palpable fear that mirrored the horror Arthur felt. Outnumbered and steeped in the thick atmosphere of impending doom, Arthur quickly devised a plan. The only way to save the kidnapped villagers would be to turn the night folk's superstitions against them. Arthur smeared thick handfuls of mud across his face and body. He transformed himself into a creature of the bayou, blending seamlessly into the shadows. He moved throughout the camp, extinguishing flames and breaking ceremonial fetishes. Before long, over half the clearing was plunged into darkness. The night folk looked around in panic, fearing they had displeased their dark deity. Aiming at the night sky, Arthur shot several rounds from his rifle, piercing the dark silence and scattering the cult's members. They ran off in different directions, yelling and hollering, and were soon out of sight. 
he quickly approached and cut the binds from the villagers, whispering, Stay close, the night is still dangerous, and led them through the swamp back to their village. As dawn painted the sky with strokes of gold and pink, the villagers, now safe, reunited with their families. You're a good man, Arthur Morgan, the village elder said, embracing his grandchildren. Arthur tipped his hat, a slight smile crossing his lips as he mounted his horse. The adventure had ended, but the swamp kept its secrets, and he rode off towards Saint-Denis his heart heavy with the knowledge of the dark corners of the world. Under a sky quilted with silver stars, Arthur Morgan's horse clopped quietly through the vast open expanse of the heartlands. The moon, a mere sliver of gleaming ivory, cast long shadows over the grassy plains, while a crisp night breeze carried the distant howls of coyotes. Arthur, his hat pulled low over his brow, was returning from a visit to the trapper, a parcel of fragrant spices secured in his saddlebag, a simple errand for Mary who had developed a fondness for spiced venison stew. As he rode, Arthur's thoughts drifted lazily until a flicker of light in the distance snapped him back to alertness. Curiosity peaked. He guided his horse off the path and towards the source, dismounting to approach on foot. The light grew brighter, resolving into the glow of a campfire around which several figures were gathered. Shadows danced wildly on their faces as they spoke in hushed, urgent tones. Arthur, using years of honed instinct, slipped into the embrace of the dark, his eyes narrowing as he recognized the insignias of the O'Driscolls and the Lemoyne Raiders, rival gangs notorious for their ruthlessness. Crouching behind a clump of sagebrush, his ears pricked as snippets of their conversation carried over. Uniting is the only way, growled a grizzled O'Driscoll his voice rough like gravel. Them Vandalins will never see it coming. A murmur of agreement circled the fire, punctuated by the crackling wood. A plan was taking shape, a dire one by the sound of it. Arthur knew he couldn't let them carry it out not just for his gang, but for the peace of the many innocents who would be caught in the crossfire. With the patience of a hunting panther, he waited for an opening. It came when one of the raiders, a wiry man with a cough, stepped away from the group to relieve himself. Silently, Arthur followed, his leather boots soundless on the soft earth. Before the raider could even register a presence behind him, Arthur had him subdued, a hand clamped over his mouth. Shh, now, let's not make a fuss, Arthur whispered, his voice both a warning and a promise of mercy if complied with. He dragged the raider back to the shadows, swiftly knocking him out cold. One by one, 
Arthur used the darkness as his ally, incapacitating isolated gang members with an efficiency that was both terrifying and awe-inspiring. Each takedown was a quiet symphony of stealth and precision, leaving the unaware members by the fire none the wiser. Finally, with most of the lookouts neutralized, he crept closer to the fire, his revolver ready. The remaining gang leaders were too engrossed in their plotting to notice his approach. Gentlemen, Arthur said suddenly, stepping into the flickering light. The gang members jolted, reaching for their weapons, only to find Arthur's gun trained on them with unerring calm. I reckon you're at a bit of a disadvantage. The gang leaders, caught off guard and outnumbered by the business end of Arthur's revolver, surrendered with grumbled curses. Arthur, with a wry smile, used their own ropes to tie them up. Now, I suggest you rethink your alliances and your plans, he advised them, tipping his hat, because you never know who's listening in the dark. With the gang leaders secured and their plan thwarted, Arthur mounted his horse, the spices for Mary still safe in his saddlebag. As he rode back to camp, the first light of dawn tinged the horizon with gold, and the stars began to fade. The night's ambush was over, and Arthur couldn't help but chuckle softly to himself. Guess I'll be needing more spices soon, he murmured to the cool morning air. Already anticipating Mary's delighted surprise at his return, not just with her spices, but with a story that would surely add an extra dash of flavor to her stew. As we close tonight's chapter, of Arthur Morgan's wild western adventures. I hope you felt transported to a place where each flicker of the campfire and distant howl of the coyote stir stories of daring adventures and lifelong bonds. Good night, my friends. May your dreams be filled with wide open spaces and starlit skies where the trails of dusty paths promise untold adventures just over the next ridge. Let the night cradle you in a saga of legends until morning breaks. Rest easy, soothed by the gentle lull of these campfire tales. Until we meet again, under the expansive, hopeful skies, ready to ride out into landscapes steeped in lore and alive with the thrill of the chase.